So welcome back, everybody. And uh, it's a great pleasure to have uh, such uh, eloquent and uh, knowledgeable uh, panelists. So I would quickly introduce each and one of you, and uh, then we go right into the discussion. Um, I think we already heard Emma uh, speaking about GAIX, so that was a, a great way to introduce uh, the topic. So let me start um, and, and welcome first Andrea Vorgen. Um, Andrea started her career in e-commerce and digital marketing space. In 2017, she co-founded her own consultancy, Wings.co, supporting small and medium companies in their European expansion. Andrea is very engaged in driving the digital transformation both in France and in Germany. She is president of the French-German Digital Club and the Cluny Forum. Recently, she founded, uh, co-founded the non-profit European Champions Alliance, aiming to build a European tech ecosystem and turning EU companies into tech leaders. Andrea, warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Martin. So then it's my pleasure to introduce Francesco Bonfilio. Francesco joined GAIX in March this year as a new CEO of the ISPL. Uh, with over 30 years of experience in IT and consulting, Francesco brings really very broad knowledge of cloud and data into the GAIX program. He started his career as a software developer, so he knows what he's talking about, and then he became a manager. He worked uh, as CEO for an Italian company, as managing director for Accenture, and a CTO for Hewlett Packard in EMEA. Francesco has a clear vision for GAIX and believes that the values of collective intelligence, lateral thinking and teamwork are key success factors for shaping the EU data and cloud future. Francesco, benvenuto. We are Grazie, very excited Martin. to see you in a minute. Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. So, and finally, let me uh, welcome Andreas Weiss um, to the panel. Andreas is head of digital business models at the well-known ECO Association. He joined ECO in 1998, and I can say that Andreas is truly a man of many talents and interests. Beside cloud, he also covers e-commerce, artificial intelligence, and data privacy topics. In 2010, he became director of EuroCloud Germany, and in 2019, he joined the board of the Trusted Cloud Competence Network. Andreas has been very central in setting up and driving GAIX. Today, he helps to coordinate the development of the GAIX Federation services. Great, thank you all three again for joining us today. So let's get right into the discussion. Um, first, do we have the survey results? Ah, here they come. So the question we asked, do you trust GAIX to strengthen Europe's innovation power? And 13% said, yes, what could go possibly wrong? 30% said, no, we are still in the hyperscaler world. And 75%, that's quite the majority, says it depends on the speed and the rigor of implementation. Excellent, because that's what we will talk about today. So let, let me start to give the first question to Andrea. Uh, how, do, how would you interpret the survey results? And uh, what about yourself? Do you believe that GAIX can strengthen Europe's innovation power? So, thank you. So, I think mm, my first answer will be um, absolutely, but um, I think we have to distinguish maybe a little bit. I would like to, to go a little bit into detail. And um, uh, thank you again to Jonas for having invited me to this panel. Um, as you know, and as you also said in the introduction, Martin, I'm not here on behalf of myself or on behalf of my company, but rather on behalf of the European Champions Alliance and our members. So we are ourselves uh, an association that has been created last year um, in 2020 with the goal of, uh, you know, connecting businesses, connecting companies, startups, scale-ups, corporates to work together um, and to do business together and to create new business models in Europe. So I think um, coming from the standpoint, we have a little bit maybe a uh, um, a similar view to GAIA-X as an association ourselves. And when we talk about, uh, so I would like to, to develop on, on three um, quick points. Um, our uh, members are coming from, are all coming from the B2B tech sector. So cybersecurity, industry 4.0, health tech, mobility, and all of them are working on data and all of them are working with data science. So 
for them to be able to collaborate in a um, safe data space that GaiaX is providing and to work on big and large data sets to try out something and to be able to work together and collaborate is uh, for me already something that is really, really important and very important for European uh, for the European innovation power. Um, then to give uh, those companies the possibility to work in a space where they have uh, that provides rules, that provides standards, that provides governance and then also helps to, to create the emergence of new services is already a very good value proposition for me that can really strengthen Europe's innovation power. So we see it every day when we we see our members collaborate together, that innovation is happening every day. And I think that GAIX can be a big part of it. Um, the second point for me is that, of course, GAIX is not only a platform, but it's also a network. So it's a network of companies that are coming together from very many different companies, many different uh, uh, countries also coming together um, in um, cultures, um, different ecosystems. And I think this great network can, of course, also support large research network uh, research projects that we need so much also in Europe and where we can also have the possibility to keep the good resources that we have in Europe because if we face it today very many of our resources um, and capacities and people and brains are sucked up by American players and I think giving them a playing field and a playground where they can play with the data and develop new applications and the business models is something that we really have to push and I think IX can be a very big part of it. And so I think this is something where we can really motivate European innovation and people to innovate in Europe. And the third point, and I hope this is something that, and I'm sure that we're going to see it in GAIX, and I hope very much, is that we want to push European innovation, pushed by European companies, European software, and uh, European uh, new uh, business models and new European software actors that can even uh, be able to be created on, on the GAIX, in the GAIX platform. So I'm really part of the, the, the 73%, I think. Um, no, I'm, I'm really part of the, the smaller percent. I think that really... <laughs> GAIX, if implemented and executed properly, of course, this is important because, you know, uh, it's not easy. And I think Francesco has a really big, big, big uh, work to do. Um, I think it can very much strengthen Europeans, uh, the European uh, innovation power. So I very Excellent. much um, agree. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. And it was indeed very interesting. So we have a certain... 13% who said, no, it's still a hyperscaler world. 13% who said, yes, I'm very bullish. And then a large part, which is kind of saying, oh, yeah, th there's a good opportunity, but it depends now how we go about it. So l let me hand that one over to Francesco. Um, first, can you relate to what the audience feedback was and, and, and what Andrea said? And, and can you tell us more your point of view? How does GAIX, how will it strengthen Europe's innovation power? Well, first of all, I'm very excited to see such a uh, an important result in the survey. To be honest, I was not uh, expecting that. And to be extremely honest, I believe if if you ran the same survey just six months ago, possibly you would not give the same results. So I think that this is, a, first of all, a great achievement because I, I believe people trust uh, and start to understand what we are doing at GAIA-X. I believe this is one of the objectives. I keep repeating myself when I make interviews that, believe it or not, GAIAX is part of a large program of rebranding of Europe. I am personally quite offended when I keep hearing um, voices that Europe cannot fill the gap of innovation, Europe, Europe cannot leave without knowing European technologies, and, and all those, those sort of uh, uh, vision that I do not personally share. I do believe Europe has been uh, for a long time behind the scenes. I know and everybody knows that Europe has been driving most of the, the, the largest, the, 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 the most relevant, um, uh, let me say, uh, innovation across the world. And for too long time, we have been just uh, looking at uh, a world of scenario of economy that was changing um, under our, our our foot. So we need to move. And uh, this 75% means everybody understand that we, we are on the right track. Also, we need to do it. Uh, there is no doubt that we, we have to do something and possibly this is the last chance or the last train. Uh, how GAIAX is going to uh, concre concretely uh, change uh, the innovation? Well, innovation per se is not 
the main driver of anything. Innovation has to drive some significant change in society, politics, industry, and economy. And this is what GaiaX aims to do. What we are doing is we are building a, um, a very fair and equal opportunity ecosystem where we are not cutting anyone out of the game. Actually, the contrary, we are building a layer, a soft layer of control and governance where anybody will be able to provide their services, but with a different level of transparency, interoperability, control, which means what everybody calls sovereignty or even more uh, further trust. And uh, I believe that in the, la in the last um, six months, uh, the world has seen the concrete changes that GAIAX is driving. Think about the active movement of some hyperscalers that are now all talking about sovereignty. They have all their internal programs to run sovereign clouds. They are all looking at the several initiatives in the in the in the member states of Europe to support them with several mechanisms that you know very well, like the licensing, the double encryption keys, uh, the segregated regional zones, etc. So per se, this is an element that should uh, uh, make us think about it. So if these giants are doing something new, possibly uh, we are on the right track. And again, for the first time, Europe is leading is leading the edge of, of innovation. What we're developing, and uh, Andreas is developing together with us, is a, a set of new technologies, totally independent, building a totally decentralized, detached, if you want, ecosystem that for the first time will be uh, enabling all the existing technologies. So we're not throwing away anything. We are using what we have. We are enabling anyone to play the game as long as they want to adhere to the rules. And we are driving the edge of innovation on a new generation of feder federated, decentralized, distributed cloud, totally uh, transparent, totally controllable. Nothing like that exists on the market and even the largest player are following us. I think, I think all these elements, uh, and I agree, we need to do it in time, but time is no more the main driver because we are on the right track and nobody is doing it faster than us. So we need to do the right things and hopefully in the fastest way. But uh, I think these elements make me feel we are on the right track and we are doing the right thing. Thank you. That that was quite interesting. And I, I couldn't agree more. I think uh, the topic is on the agenda and there's a lot of momentum and dynamics nationally in Europe but also internationally, you mentioned US, but also even in Asia, many are looking, you know, what's going on there. So, so let me bridge to, to, um, to Andreas. Andreas, um, one, one topic where we have been leading in the past was GDPR. Right, so that was also like a, a really new way of thinking all, uh, around data, which was then exported to uh, many countries as well. Um, now, on the other side, GDPR sometimes is a little bit defensive. Yeah, what you cannot do with the data. So, how do you see that uh, GDPR and GAIAX? Is that some somewhat at odds with each other, or do you see um, th there are no trade-offs or conflicts? Okay, let me just first say um, GDPR is also one of our European values and it has been finally successful uh, with all the objections we heard in the meantime. But uh, it is worth to consider that we need to protect our, our data, our privacy. And this also applies for non-personal information and this is addressed by GAIA-X. Um, and just referring back to what Francesco said and also the survey, Obviously, we are getting back into a level playing field, and this is really what we are aiming for, uh, to, 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 to build up our, to shape our own future in the digital space for you. As also Andrea rightly said, we need this ecosystem of startups and scale-ups who are driving innovation, and therefore, they need the room. Andrea said we need a playground. I think we should take it more serious. It must be very major. It must be serious in the way how we are going to deal with data. And here it comes back to GDPR. When we talk about GDPR, it is uh, it, it outlines clear rules. And we have further rules, which are also related to our narrative of European values, like EIDAS, like the EU Cybersecurity Act and others which are going to be aggregated and we need to build a functional model which is in, aligned, in, in alignment with the goals of these regulations. And uh, just uh, 
uh, and now we also realize that GDPR is a kind of uh, export factor. So uh, a lot of countries beyond the European Union have taken this into consideration, adopted the key principles of the GDPR in their uh, in, in, in their area. And a huge uh, or tremendous feedback from other countries like Japan, South Korea, India, Brazil, even US and China, were saying what you're doing with Gaia X is the right thing because we have the same issues. We need to clarify how to work in the future in the digital area. And uh, there is a clear USP by Gaia X beyond the classical cloud hyperscaler model. We're talking about the edge processing. So the inclusion of edge, we, we are talking about appropriate interconnection as a service. We are talking about how to apply innovation and how to build up data spaces and data rooms uh, to, to get into these really fancy areas like, like smart cities, smart mobility. And all this has been already explained by, by Emma previously. So this is what we are aiming for, and, and we have to address this level of complexity and provide sound solutions and build up such ecosystems. And we are very happy that we have now this really good management team at the association to drive this message forward, to orchestrate all the activities, because it, it's not an easy path to deal with 300 members and, and uh, 800 organizations and 20 hubs and so on. So this is a huge <laughs> effort, but I think we have to take this challenge and move it forward. And then we bring Gaia X to a similar success like the GDPR. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, that very interesting start of our round. Uh, I would now, because many customers ask us, and I'm sure many of the audience are interested in, in where does Guy extend today? Yeah, because uh, that it, it will be a huge driver, but where are we at the moment? So let, let me start to ask Andrea. Uh, you speak to many startups and companies. Yeah. So, so what are they at the moment waiting for? Uh, or are they already fully engaged and, 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 uh, and going into the product? Or do they say, oh, you know, these, I don't know, services or these labels are missing. And once they are there, we can get started. So what's the perception from the outside? Hmm. So from the outside, and just to, to make it clear, so we are as an association today, um, not part of the GAIA-X um, association yet, because we are still very young and maybe it will come in the future, but uh, I can speak for our members and some of our members are part of uh, GAIA-X and some of them could be part, but are not. Some of them could be, uh, say, um, ecosystem players in this, uh, in this uh, adventure. And I think what people are waiting for, and um, as far as I know, and as far as what, I, what I've uh, heard and read, this is something that ha will be addressed and is being addressed now that the management team is in place. I think people will try to understand better what GaiaX is, what it can do for them, how they can really be involved and how it will also represent their, um, their needs and also the expectations they have on the project. So, what we what we see, and I mean, as I think um, what Andreas just uh, just said, you know, if you have a lot of members and if you have a lot of different opinions, it's not always easy to find the the the, the common ground. And if you have you know people that are very liberal and others that are very conservative, and you know, you have to bring people together. And this is what we try to do. So we, as an association, support, of course. The project and every time we talk about it we are very positive because we think it can drive a very positive change in, in europe and i think what people are looking for is to see also concrete actions and use cases that will be developed and um, i think we will see some of them before the end of the year or in the beginning of the next year with the first uh, uh, lighthouse projects coming into place and i think this is what what especially the startups and the scale-ups and also the SMBs are looking for is to uh, really understand what the project um, can do for them, how they can get involved and to understand better um, also what is really behind and um, how they can be part of it. Perfect, yeah. And uh, I can all, uh, also add from my experience, in the beginning it was not always easy to bring through the relatively abstract concepts of data space and federation services. Um, and I had many discussions where, where people were asking from press or so, uh, how, how does it really work and what's the application? And now with the use cases, 
that we were seeing, which are now really uh, mandated and consortia are formed, it gets much more real and much more clear. And I think uh, many companies can say, oh, this is a use case. I could, I could, I could do that as well, or I can hop on there. Yeah? So I think we're really at a very interesting stage at the moment. Francesco, uh, you're obviously uh, insider number one here in this round today. Yeah. So um, please do give us a, a look behind the curtain. What is going on in the ISBL? And in the GAIX community, what are you working on? I'm sure it's a lot. Maybe you can structure it a little bit for us. Okay. Uh, first of all, where are, where are we at? We are in a very important year. To me, year one, which is 2021 for me, uh, was the setup uh, year. So by the end of this year, we will start to see the first uh, GAIX services, uh, which will be born through some of the Hawaii House projects that Emma was, was mentioning about. And we, of course, we have data space lighthouse projects, which means projects where we are implementing uh, data spaces across some specific verticals. One is Catena X that everybody uh, here talking about, but it's not the only one. We have five already running in parallel, maybe different sizes, but one is in the agri uh, place, the smart agriculture, one is in the energy, one another one is in the mobility. And, and, and there, are, there is a lot of, of other projects in a pipeline that already counts more than 100 uh, use cases. The second thing we are doing, we are continuing developing the GAIA-X concept because GAIA, um, the, the GAIA-X association does three things. One is the specification. So we specify what GAIA-X is. And uh, in a couple of weeks, you will see a lot of new documents. Namely, there will be a new release of the technical architecture document, which explains the operational model of GAIA-X. So who does what within a GAIA-X federation, which is not trivial. Uh, then you will see the first uh, released specification of the Federation services that were developed by the project led by Andreas and Echo. And again, you will see the specification of these uh, famous four uh, Federation services. And then also we will issue the architectural standards. So the document that collects all the technical standards that will apply to Federation to GAIAX services. And last but not least, we are developing uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, new concepts. Uh, we call them MVG, so minimum vi viable products of GAIA-X that uh, will be available before the end of the year. So we are doing all these things in parallel in a very complex ecosystem. You have to think about we moved from 22 to 320 members in less than one year. So that's not exactly easy. Uh, as everybody can understand, but we are establishing some streamlined process that can be still not uh, so transparently visible uh, from the outside, because there is a lot of work we are doing in parallel of, uh, let's say, the, the, the ongoing management of the association. But in the next couple of uh, weeks, let me say in the next month, we will issue a new clear operational handbook that will describe in a much uh, crisp way, what the working groups are doing, how the uh, committees are structured, how to participate, and uh, putting this together uh, and taking into account that in the 18th and 19th of November, we will be uh, holding our uh, summit. All these things in less than one month will be extremely more clear. You will see a lot of new uh, unleashed power. Uh, we will unveil a lot of new information about GAIAX and members will understand even better how to participate. So it's a long run. Wow, and it's really amazing. I mean, you mentioned end of the year so many times, so it um, it's only two months uh, left. Yeah. So there we, okay, I'm very curious. And, and uh, of course, we will have the summit in, in November. That's the right, the right uh, stage uh, to publish a lot of things. But um, I guess you will not be done completely by end of the year. Yeah. So w yeah. what would be left for next year? Is it all about implementation then? Or what is it? Well, we have a, we have a long run. So my outlook is five years. And uh, I had the, the first year is the set up. The second year is the grow. Mm -hmm. Uh, year, so we will create. Uh, we we aim to, to to create the first marketplaces of GAIA services, and by year three, which is going to be 2023, what I'm expecting is a pool from the market. So in other words, if all these, not even all, but if some of these lighthouse lighthouse projects are building some real value, what we all expect is that the market will start asking for 
GAIAX services. And at that point, we will have the labels in place. We will have some implementation of the, the federation services in place, other services that I'm, I'm not going into technical details available, and some examples of implementation. The, let me say, the legal toolbox will be there and everybody will see in the legal toolbox whatever they want to build. So now we are pushing, the ASBL is pushing from 21 to 23. From 23 to 25, I'm expecting the market to pull and the objective by 25 is moved from our 4%, I keep preaching that, of ownership of the digital economy in Europe into at least a 30, 40% in Europe, but maybe a 15% worldwide, which I think Europe deserves. That would be my five mm -hmm. years outlook. And if mm -hmm. everything works fine, it would be determined by the market, not by ourselves. We're not doing something for the sake of Gaia X, IESBL. We're doing something because the, because the market asks for it. So if we are successful, you don't have to wait a long time. It will come by itself, like in any digital uh, initiative, like in any mobile app, any disruptive uh, disruptive website or uberization of the of the business you know that it comes by itself if it works so we hope it works and the survey confirmed we are on the right track so far so good <laughs> Excellent. Uh, very helpful, this, uh, let's say, five years outlook. Uh, Andreas, um, I understand you're helping to coordinate the development of the Federation service. And when I, uh, if I get uh, Francesco right, they're also quite uh, near to completion. Yeah. So the, the, the Federation services, identity and trust, federated catalog, sovereign data exchange and compliance. Could you give us a little bit more insight what, what they mean? Um, and and really, uh, is it true they will be available in a, in, a, in a few months, or where are we at the uh, at, at the implementation? All right, yeah, you already mentioned these four dimensions. It's it's about self-sovereign IDs. I think this is something which is really most of important if we want to have real reliable relationships between all the participants in the ecosystem. When it comes to contracting, we need to be very clear who is working on behalf of which entity. And uh, I think really the establishment and the promotion of SSI crossover Europe is one of the key activities we have to drive forward, even with Gaia X. Then uh, we are talking about this catalog, which is a catalog of services. And it's much more than just cloud services. We are really talking now about data services. And this is another level of complexity to describe the data the ontology, the, the usage policies, because this is part of the sovereignty element that a issuer of can, can describe for which purpose and for which time or for which use case the data can be used by the recipient of the data. And this is really something where we need a clear description, the catalog services uh, to find them, to identify each of the federations. And this is again, what we need to emphasize. This concept is to build up federations. It's not a huge uh, organic system, Gaia-X. It's a multitude of federations who are acting together. And each of the federation can uh, specify who is in, who is out, and what are the services we want to uh, uh, include in our catalog. Is it public? Is it private? Whatever. So this is a level of self-determination we are supporting with the federation services, which then comes to part, how to share sovereign data, um, and uh, we are there are various concepts like uh, computer data, data to compute, uh, uh, even when it, when it comes to the regulated market like finance, healthcare, it is uh, not uh, seen that anyone can share data with other parties, but we can apply algorithm and get knowledge out of the data which resides to the owner of the data. So th these are the concepts and of course we have to consider compliance. Uh, to, to address this uh, level of uh, transparency. Um, the user, they want to know uh, where the data are stored, where the data are processed, because this is a matter of regulation and uh, uh, we need this level of transparency. And uh, beside the activities of the association, it's worth to mention all the hubs. Uh, it is really impressive. Within just one year, there are 15 hubs cross over Europe already established. And uh, just in the German hub, we have 10 different domains who are working repeatedly every month. Uh, uh, they are going to meet, they, they talk about use cases. And yeah, Jonas is also uh, out of these standard projects for the GAIX use case. I think you are already engaged in six of them out of 16. So this is really the journey we have to support here to build up the use cases, to have this feedback loop with the users 
to address their needs uh, and, and how to bring this to an operational level. And coming back to the Federation services, yeah, we have this tender. The German Ministry of uh, Economics and Energy gratefully contributed uh, money to, to support this uh, development of open source. So public money should lead into public code. And this open source, uh, uh, we are close to, to release now the, the, the final tender lots. And then within the next four to six months, there are tangible results and functional code in the repositories, which are managed by the GAIA-X Association, and which can be publicly mm -hmm. accessed. And, and, and this is where we are right now. As we are bound to the formal procedures of a formal tender, of course, I cannot grant everything, but we are really moving forward. We are really progressing. And in Q1, you will see tangible results and real functional code implementation. Beside all the activities, we have hackathons. We have this MVG, as, as Francesco mentioned. Now it's a time to engage the real developer community. And I will come back to Andrea to present where we are and to engage you also, because we need this community of cloud natives and of innovation drivers to be part of this journey. Otherwise, GAIA-X will not be a success. Okay, very interesting and uh, good to push it really into the developer community. I think that's where usually the magic happens and, and many projects are decided if they, you know, if they succeed or fail. Uh, Francesco, let me come back on one topic, um, the accreditation criteria for GAIA-X or what, what Emma, I think uh, the, she mentioned uh, the label. Yeah. So can you give us a bit of an outlook? Um, where do we stand in, def or where do you stand in defining the, the labels? W will there be many labels, dif different, let's say, degrees of uh, strictness? Or what's your thinking around the labels at the moment? Yeah, I will surprise you, but this is very easy. Uh, we've been working for a long time on labels and the first document, uh, uh, I mean, I, I developed the first draft of the label document back in March. So you can imagine we have been talking about it uh, long. And why? First of all, because label is very innovative as a concept. We are pushing to implement something completely innovative, completely new, and not the old concept of certification. So in other words, we want to move the old concept of human uh, certification authority bodies uh, into technology. And uh, the second part of, of the answer to your question is that we are going to implement a, a framework to verify services uh, depending on labels that will not be defined only by the GAIA-X ASBL Association, but will be defined by people that are trusted in the market. So you can imagine that if someone tomorrow wants to issue a label for financial services, for banking services, for energy uh, in France more than in Germany or everywhere else, they have to be able to define what they mean by that label. So what does an energy, uh, an atomic energy cloud service label means? So they will be able to specify what they mean by that label, which simplifies the, a very complex concept of compliance uh, principles we will uh, understand the compliance principles behind and we will implement that label into technical mechanisms that go to verify every single attribute of a service. How we do that? Because we have single identity management, we have a single description of the services, we have a single, if you want, taxonomy of a service that we can inspect and verify. In this way, we as GAIA-X will not impose any label and we will not decide any label apart from some basic one. We're thinking about two or three, but very generic. And we will leave anybody, any authority, any trade association, any governmental institution to define what they mean by a label because there are so many different uh, meaning of label and we will implement it. And this is for the first time possible because nobody out there is doing something like that. So we are translating theoretical things into technical concepts and verify them from a technical perspective. We will strictly stay on the technical verification side. In other words, if something cannot be verified technically, we will make it explicit. We will not say we, uh, ver we have verified it. We want to be trusted. This is a new generation of trusted uh, infrastructure, trusted technology, trusted digital platform that we want to be extremely transparent. So we will be 
extremely uh, um, uh, focused on verifying all the elements behind the label and we would not sell labels as sticker outside this would not be possible you can only achieve a label through the implementation of the compliance services that Andreas was, was talking about and accepting to be inspected according to a common descriptor of a service, accepting to be verified and registered into an immutable, incorruptible registry that would be decentralized, like in, in the internet, like in the, you know, the blockchain technologies uh, allowed to do today. So uh, I, again, I don't mm -hmm. know into the technical detail, but this is what we're doing. So it's something no, much I, more I, I, practical yeah and theoretical actually makes a lot of sense and we as you know we're one of the largest uh, domain handlers in, in the world so uh, we work a lot with registries so probably that resonates exactly. a little bit uh, with what you just outlined um are you looking because you mentioned decentralization uh, blockchain is that already part of your technical uh, let's say concepts and ideas or is that something you will look at a later stage at we don't talk about blockchain we talk about digital ledgers uh, that you can imagine today are implemented through the blockchain but the blockchain is no more seen a single concept so it's evolving a lot in particular we are trusting very much the fc project so the european blockchain service infrastructure uh, that is already in place and already serves a lot of the digital uh, services that the public administration, for example, around Europe uses. So we're not reinventing the wheel. At the same time, we are using very trustable and solid technologies that Europe have already uh, invested on. But we are translating, let me say, the concept of uh, um, ESG into the digital world. So we want to make sure that digital services are you know, transparently and evidently and objectively um, verified through our label. And to do that, you need to use some trusted technology, decentralized technology, mm -hmm. not corruptible. So ASBL will not be a single point of failure, will not be a single point of accountability, we will not, will not run uh, any GAIA-X related services uniquely. It would be a concept of distributed uh, consensus, decentralized architecture, like in the internet. Uh, you, you can see at GAIA-X, ASBL, like the registrar of the internet for the new generation of cloud that we are going to build. Perfect. Okay, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, we are moving on and I would like to ask you to vote again. What benefits can small and medium companies and the public sector derive from GAIAX in the future? Please vote now. Oh, that was fast. Okay, uh, let's see. Look at the results. Uh, not added value, eight percent. Okay, I think we did a great job here to lay out already the value add. Then um, um, the sectors will have European alternatives for cloud usage. Perfect, fifty-two percent. And um, okay, also what, what was mentioned in the beginning, we're already seeing. U.S. companies, maybe even Asian companies coming more into the European way of, uh, let's say, thinking about uh, sharing data and, and working with data and protecting data. So that's quite interesting. Um, Andrea, um, it, it looks like you're my first survey uh, interpreter today. I hope that's okay for you. Um, what do you make of the results? And, and from your point of view, what may be the biggest benefit for startups and companies in Germany and France from GAIX? Mm -hmm. So I, th I think the result is interesting because um, as we see when we talk to our members or also to our community is that people are really actively looking for a European alternative in the, in the cloud sector and I mean we have great companies here in France working in the cloud sector in Germany in other in other countries in Europe so I think this is really an alternative that people are looking for and I think um, uh, the, the trust that can also be tried by the Gaia X um, initiative and association can really help those providers also to gain in visibility and gain also in traction in the markets and also um, help them to to work and to collaborate together and to uh, provide uh, joint solutions together. So I think uh, when we talk about those cloud providers that are sometimes also still small and medium sized businesses, when we talk about the startups and the scale ups, I think this is the first benefit for them is to have uh, another platform also to be able to collaborate um, and then also provide to provide those services to other small and medium sized uh, businesses. And um, when we talk about the startups, I think, first of all, 
Um, what I think is that there is a huge potential of collaboration, of course, this is what we're looking for. And also something that um, motivated also for us the creation of the European Champions Alliance is that we see that we, for a, a couple of technical questions or problems or ideas, we are in Europe a little bit reinventing the wheel in several um, countries in the same time trying to solve the same issues that we all have as humans. And so what we would also hope for is that GAIA-X can be a platform where those um, um, projects can come together and um, work together to make them, um, let's say, move forward even quicker by combining the resources, by combining the data, and by combining also um, the different uh, intelligence and the people that are behind those projects. So. This is something that I really see. And on the same time, when we talk about label or certification or being part of the community, I also think that GAIA-X is a huge possibility of um, 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 branding for, for Europe, for every company that is part of it, for the brand that will be created by GAIA-X, as we did for GDPR. So I think this is something that uh, European companies are looking for, um, because being part of this um, joint community can also give uh, to uh, to the decision makers, to the buyers, um, the trust that uh, a French company, for example, is part of GAIA-X as a German company is. And so it gives some kind of community uh, feeling and also some kind of trust that we still need very much because when we talk to French companies, uh, startups here that want to go to the German market and vice versa, then there is still a big trust issue that we have in Europe. So being part of the same project and pushing into the same direction, I think can also open up um, a little bit the spirits of everyone uh, to European technology. And I think uh, we have great technology and we have to make it known all over the world. Oh, perfect. And I can uh, totally agree. I mean, if you're in a US company, you immediately have 350 million uh, consumers at your you know, as your first market, and then you can think uh, how to move on. Yeah, in in Europe, depends on which country you start. It's maximum 80 millions, but sometimes only 10 or 15 millions. And as soon as you move into another country, it's it's language, it's regulation, and so on. So uh, I really like what you're doing with the alliance, and uh, hopefully, GAIX can be a better technical platform, which uh, helps to scale faster throughout the continent. Perfect. Then, um, Andreas, very concretely, if a CEO of a company comes to you today and asks you, look, I think GAIX is a great idea. I want to be part of rebranding Europe. What can I do concretely now, today? Is there already a good answer? And what would you tell him? Yeah, first also. of all, um, everyone should understand GAIX is not a product. It's a concept and, and, and it's, a, it's an offering to build up a prosperous European digital economy which means uh, they shouldn't wait until Gaia-X is ready because it will be never finished. It's an ongoing journey, it's a, it's a moving target. Uh, and those who are really considering we want to do something in the digital area, they should consider how to, what are the, 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 the potentials in their domain, in their business, how can you uh, transform yourself and, and how what is the, the, the environment to, to, to look for new emerging digital business models. What GAIA-X really serves is uh, this uh, level of self-determination in terms of choices of providers and services. It should also serve for uh, more diversity uh, in, in, the, in the landscape of offerings and uh, this engagement of SMEs in the digital value chain. And uh, this must be orchestrated all together. So it's not... Uh, really say, don't wait for Gaia X, make your homework, <laughs> work uh, where, where you want to go. And best case, Gaia X will give you all the tooling you need to, to expedite your journey and to avoid any pitfalls and, and uh, work closely together with all the other actors and all your, your, uh, your other parties you are interacting with. And uh, this is my current message right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, in a similar logic, when we talk to companies and, and they ask about GAIX, we, we usually say, start with your data. What kind of data do you have? Yeah, And ask yourself, usually internally, data can be used very easily. Yeah, But as soon as you want to go external, let's say, share it with customers, share it with suppliers, share it within your industry, then it gets complicated. And I think that is actually the questions, uh, you know, companies and leaders and, and an IT responsibility 
uh, responsible manager should ask themselves how can we how can we connect with data outside but don't wait don't okay. wait for others make your own drive yeah. absolutely yeah that's always good advice yes Perfect. Then um, let's close the let's close this discussion with the last question, uh, Francesco. I wanted to, uh, of course, ask you um, about your vision uh, of GaiaX, but I think you outlined it already quite nicely when you said, you know, what should happen in different uh, stages and, and the next years. So let me ask a, diff a bit of a different question. Yeah, w when I introduced you, and I think that was something which is important for you. You talked about values. You talked about lateral thinking. You talked about, uh, you know, teamwork. Yeah. So maybe just um, t tell us and the audience, how do you bring these values into the ISPL, into the Gaia X communities, and, and why are they specifically important for you? Yeah, very simply, uh, lateral thinking means looking at things from a different perspective. I think one of the problems that uh, that that, it, that it's causing the fact we are here talking about a renaissance of Europe is that we have been for too long looking at things from the inside without trying to understand what were the real causes of our delay or of our lack of innovation. So we need to be open to new perspective. We need to avoid uh, putting our, let me say, conflict of interests. I'm talking about all the companies that make also the, 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 the membership of GAX in front of the common good for Europe that we are trying to build. And to do that, you need to look at things from a different, totally different perspective. Sometimes you need to neglect a little bit yourself, your experience, your knowledge, and also uh, your specific company objectives, which are coming from the business. I know it's not easy at all. But this is what we need to make AX successful. Uh, second, I believe that we uh, truly have to think about in a can doer instead of a yes butter manner. Too many people keep saying yes but. Uh, we instead keep uh, thinking that yes, we can do it. So let's think about how to do things. And uh, to be honest, I believe also one of the problem I see is a kind of uh, I call it the chicken and the egg story. So some people are waiting for GAIAX to be out there in the markets. Where can I buy it? Like Amazon or Google or, or Azure. And other people are saying, yes, but we are here available to do it. Why don't you involve us? So the simple solution to that is data spaces are not things, are not physical things. They are projects, business cases through which you can build value. So anyone thinking about a, a data space, a way to share data that can provide value, come to GAIAX and we will endorse the project. We will make it possible. We will find the member companies from the providers and user side of the, of the world that want to do it together. And we, in this way, we can make GAIAX faster a reality because this is an important thing. We are designing the car of the future. So is no, uh, no carbon uh, footprint is uh, fast is uh, smart driving is whatever you want but we are prototyping it as well but if no company car will develop it on the market nobody will use it so it is important that we start being asked to develop GAIA-X services and uh, and uh, and people do not wait for GAIAX to come out with uh, with something already out of the box. It's a it's a double engagement game, and possibly this will be the challenge in the next six months. So once we find uh, and the Lighthouse projects are doing that, we show that the, it is possible that it can be done. We will receive more and more requests to implement GAIAX services. But let's not be shy. Let's do it. Let's think about GAIAX as a tremendous opportunity for startups. Uh, a small medium enterprise anybody can sit at large tables with the largest players in europe nowadays and nobody ha can provide such an opportunity come to us tell us your story we will put you in touch with the right people we'll build a consortium and we will make it possible perfect final statement thank you very much all of you that was very insightful for for the audience i'm, I'm quite sure now let's get claudia back with questions from the audience Yes, thank you so much for all these insights. And we do have a lot of questions from our audience, starting with uh, Andreas mentioned it, Francesco just said it, it's uh, Gaia X is not a product, but it's a project. 
and uh, they would like to call it a political project. Would you say, yes, it is a political project? And is there like uh, the possibility that Gaia X will be mandatory one day, that it compliance to Gaia X? Francesco, let me go first. Like... I, 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 don't, I don't want to be impolite, but I have to answer no. In no way, <laughs> Gaia X is a political project. Gaia X is a private association run by the members. We have no public subsidies. We have no grants. We are not driven by any political constitutions at all. The only fact that makes some people think we are a political project is that we are so influential in the political world that everybody talks about us. To me, this is a very good thing, but we want to be the voice of the market and this is what we are doing. And uh, uh, if in the future, some governmental institution will decide to standardize on GAIAX, it will be their decisions. We have no way, no mean to influence them more than what we want to do because we want to be the voice of the customers and providers of technology of Europe. That's all we do. And that was a very sharp answer to that question. Um, the next one is about, um, can you tell us something about already how will the authentication process run from Gaia X? Maybe Andreas, can you tell us something about that? Idas was already mentioned um, yeah. from some of our participants here. As I mentioned, uh, one of the key objectives is to implement SSI. So there are various approaches. We are using now DID, Decentralized Identification. Probably you've heard about all these mechanisms with a kind of wallet where you have your digital wallet and you have some credentials here and there and what is your entitlement in all these services. But the key message is it is owned by the user. So the user, they have their credentials on hand and they can manage them. It is not that you share this with thousands of other identity systems, because this is the, this level of self-determination and transparency that only the user is the controller of his entitlement and his credentials. And uh, this is uh, pretty aligned with the idea of uh, governmental services in the future, where you can uh, uh, book your, your driver license online because you have an appropriate identity, which can be verified as you do with your passport. So this is something where we think it's worth to go. Uh, it is not easy because every company outside, they have already their own identity system. So we need to understand how to include them, how to bridge them into this new world of SSI. Uh, but this is a journey we have to go anyway, because this is crucial for the, uh, for the, for the success of such digital uh, to work in this manner. And uh, this is one of the key deliverables out of the Federation services. Thank you, Andreas. Um, the question pops up again. Maybe I give it to Andrea this time. Like, it still seems like this is a project for big fishes. Uh, what about the smaller companies and startups? How they are? How are they supposed to take part and represent their interests as well? Mm -hmm. So I think that, um, of course, from the outside and for many uh, startups or SMBs, it can be quite challenging to find the right information, the right touch point. But I think as Francesco just uh, pointed out, um, um, I think you have to take the initiative also to wanting to engage with the project uh, and with the association and to contact them and to come forward with your ideas. I mean, running an association myself, uh, an association can only work because its members are participating and are pushing the projects that the association wants to achieve. So. Um, if they don't come forward with their ideas, then of course uh, it doesn't go as quick as if everyone would put in the hours and some time and some, you know, headspace. And what we also see um, in, in Europe is that sometimes participating even in professional associations is not something that is part of every company. And I think it should be. And I think they should put in. And of course, a startup doesn't have like 200 or 200 people being able to do lobbying or, you know, developing for Gaia X. But I think every company should have a little bit of uh, time and resources and uh, people thinking about those topics and engaging in associations like Gaia X, like in our association or in ECO. So I think everyone can do a little bit. And I think this is something that we also have to develop. So just uh, pick up an email and just uh, start writing. Say, hi, Francesco. This is what I want to do. Can you help me? And then, as you just said, he will try to help. So just do it. 
<laughs> Will and, you help uh, out, Claudia? If I just, uh, Claudia, if I just may add to that one, yeah. I mean, we're also in a lot of consortia, and in every consortia there is a startup included or multiple startups. And often the idea, the very the, the very first idea, came from from a startup. Yeah. So I think it's not an either or uh, discussion, but really come up and find the right player. Sometimes they're big, sometimes they're small, but it doesn't matter so much. Yeah, just come together. Absolutely. Can I see you all nodding? <laughs> Francesco, this you wanted true. to add something? Yeah, I, I wanted to add something. I'm very proud to say that GAIAX Association membership is made of, roughly speaking, 60% uh, providers, 40% users, which is a good balance, believe me. So it's not just an association of IT providers for IT providers. We're talking about real economy here, so everybody's interested. Second, but not less important, is the percentage of small medium enterprises is roughly 70%. So Europe uh, economic fabric is made largely, uh, we're talking about 85 to 90% of small medium enterprise. IT is no difference. So we are actively engaging those small medium enterprises and startups and giving them voice. And uh, we are listening to them a lot. As you can imagine, small companies, by the way, are more agile and dynamic than large enterprises when it gets to creating new stuff and we are creating new stuff. So there's a lot of startups actively involved. Some startups may not, may not have the resources like Andrea correctly pointed out. Some others maybe are asking themselves whether it would be worthwhile to give out their intellectual property instead of keeping it for themselves. Let me say that many have taken the decision that working together with GAIX provides an accelerator to them because they can uh, convey their knowledge into a broader project and come to the market first with a piece of that technology already GAIAX compliant becoming part of large um, consortium instead of hoping to succeed. And we know that the life cycle of startups, I, I know by experience in Europe, unfortunately, is 90% of them die in the first 12 months. So I think AX is a good opportunity to stay alive and become bigger. And maybe just for a short closing statement, you mentioned, Francesco, the main driver is not time anymore. For each of you, what is the main driver for GAIAX at the moment? The main driver, technically speaking, we want to achieve the end of the year with a clear definition of the identity and, uh, um, and uh, compliance uh, services, because that would be the neck bone to, uh, let me say, make it all possible. And one, once that is there, uh, all the rest will come much easier, much easier, much faster. So time is important. I know many people out there are waiting to find the first marketplace selling GAIAX services. To be honest with you, this is, this is a no-brainer. I mean, once we have all these mechanisms in place, and unfortunately, they are not the most visible ones, the visible ones will, become, uh, will come very, very fast. So I think the priorities are uh the identity services the service descriptor and the compliance services these three mechanisms which are the backbone of this verification and control layer that can sit on top of any technology if by the end of the year we will achieve these uh three elements which is not the all set of gaia x uh, i think andreas can can confirm what i'm saying i think we are on on a, on, on a good track we are on, uh, at the right place to be not to say that all the rest is not important, but technically speaking, and unfortunately I have a big technical background, all the rest is much more trivial. And uh, it's just a matter of engagement. Like I said, you know, people trusting, coming on board, telling stories, and, and the rest will come like a, a snowball effect. This is what I'm expecting. I hope Andrea, Andreas and Martin, they agree because we are running out of time. I wanted to give a closing statement to all of you, but thank you so much for your insights. Let's keep up the great work rebranding and shaping Europe's future with Gaia X. Thank you, Francesco, Andrea, Andreas and Martin. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you very much. Take care.